duration will be timed with a recording meter. Time will be indicated at the following segments to remind the participants of the remaining time for each presentation. 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 2 minutes, 30 seconds. In the last 10 seconds remaining, seconds will be announced with both hands. If presentation is incomplete after 20 minutes, presentation will be automatically stopped with a verbal announcement in order to move to the question period. A period of five minutes is allocated to the jury to ask questions concerning the presentation. After five minutes, a verbal announcement will stop the question period, even if the question or the answer is incomplete. It is mandatory that at least one question is asked by the jury to complete the question period. Note that if a participant reveals the name or the source of the university, will lead to penalty. In order to start the presentation, please turn off any electric device that could be uh, disturbing during the presentation. I will now let the jury present themselves. Good morning. My name is Luis Cote, President of Lancaster Communication. Hello, I'm Arlette Gabou. I'm a marketing and communication uh, coordinator at Vienna. Marta Sainarel, I'm a marketing coordinator at the Vienna Resort. Hi, Geneviève Lerois, I'm a media strategist at Scarborough Worldwide. We understand the future can be a scary place, but with the various innovations that the future holds, it's possible to have a more humanized robotics system. That's why we are here today. My name is Danny, this is my colleague David and Siham, and we represent Knight Consulting because we are here to fight for your place in the market. Today, we are here with AVR Humanizing Robotics. Avant continuer la présentation en anglais, mais je ne vous pas de proposer des questions en français à la fin. So starting off with why we're here, to create a communication strategy for the next nine months, to really engage with your current and potential customers to celebrate your 25 years of business and your credibility within the marketplace. In order to do so, we have to look at three different aspects. There's a huge geographic span of your clientele, so we need to make sure the message is strong, regardless of where your clients are. We also know that there's an opportunity to upsell to your current clients because they have many factories and not all of them use your services. And finally, we want to keep your mission very strong in mind because we're all about humanizing robotics and that has to show through with any communication plan. So let's start off with our analysis. Thank you, Siam. All right, now for an industry analysis. First of all, um, I really want to put emphasis on the importance of trade shows. So we know that your customers are really in a niche market being the aerospace engine manufacturers and the communication basis is on, like, pretty much only trade shows. So there's a huge importance for you guys to really communicate through those channels. Um, yeah. so second of all, um, you're the only player in that niche market, meaning that you really have this competitive advantage right now, but it's not going to be sustainable in the long run. So it's really important for you to secure your clients that you have and make sure they're going to be able to retain them if there's a, a future threat of competition that happens. Third of all, um, you pretty much have all of the uh, gas turbine engine manufacturers. There's not that much in the world. There's only four uh, really big players. So right now, you're at full capacity of your customers, and it's really just increasing the number of factories that you have with each and every one of them to increase your overall sales. And finally, as previously mentioned, you're the market leader. So really, um, what you're going to want to do is it's your responsibility to increase the market size and really to try and fight with those indirect competitors being the engineers doing the, the work that they do day to day. All right, now I want to take the time to do a little bit of a comparative case uh, with another like, major player here in, uh, in Quebec, Pranamuni Canada. So in 2016, they celebrated a major milestone being the 100,000th engine manufactured. And they basically did like a sort of campaign year long uh, to celebrate this milestone. So it's really good comparison for your case if you want to celebrate your 25th year anniversary. So what they did basically is a couple of tactics and I illustrated two of them. First one being creation of milestone plaques. So they handed out these plaques to all of their major customers while attending trade shows, and they're able to take pictures with them and afterwards use those pictures for their marketing content. And lastly, they also created uh, anniversary events, um, like well, milestone events, really to celebrate the presence of their customers and the work that they're doing with them. All right, now let's take a look at your company. So I really want to illustrate the four strengths that you guys have, and that's basically created your success throughout the years. So first of all, I want to take the time to, to congratulate you for your 25 years of existence. Uh, it's really a good milestone, like lots of companies get to that point. Uh, and you have like 1,100 projects, which is very good. 
Second of all, um, I think one of the, those, the key reasons why you achieve this is you really deliver good uh, customer service. So you keep your customers satisfied and you do good business with them. Third of all, uh, you're doing constant investment in R&D, meaning that your customers don't need to look elsewhere because you're always able to supply their needs. And finally, um, you're really able to give high levels of precision and reputability that's good for the engineers. All right, I want to talk about your mission and values because it's very important moving forward that whatever campaign you do really respects who you are as a company and as people, as employees of the company also. So your mission is to hum humani humanize robots. And um, I want to put emphasis on the two main values that really like, stand for your company being uh, human humans and innovation. Um, so moving forward, you're really going to want to use these values in your messaging campaigns. All right. Now let's take a look at the sales process. So on your company side, you're going to have your executive vice president of sales, marketing, and customer service, along with the service product development manager and your sellers that are going to do uh, the contract negotiations with the customer side. So I noted three key, uh, three key stakeholders on the customer side that you must consider um, while doing your messaging to these people. So first of all, you have the CEO. Um, the robotics that you install is a huge importance, so you're gonna have involvement with the CEO himself or herself, um, meaning that you need to consider them. Second of all, you're gonna have the VP finance, and third of all, the VP engineer. So I'm gonna discuss later on how you're gonna tailor your message to each one of these people. Um, and then just other like, considerations to keep, in, uh, to keep in mind is that you have two ways of, two, principally two ways of getting those contracts. First of all, it's direct, so either through word of mouth or through people looking on your, web, on your website. And second of all, you have business development, so going in trade shows and really doing that sort of sales pitch to get those customers. All right, now taking a look at the vice president of finance. What's gonna be very important for that person is really to see the cost benefits of what you're giving them as a service and as a product. So you're gonna to want, to, want to talk about the long-term investment and what's in it for them, and um, basically the benefits of automization. Next of all, you're gonna have your Vice President of Engineering. So for that uh, person, it's really important to talk about the uh, specific technicalities and specifications of your products. And basically, um, all the productivity and the time saving that they're gonna be able to do. And that your product will not replace them, but really just enhance the work that they do. And it's really to get that precision uh, in the work that they do so they're able to be more productive on the long term. So it's important to really tailor the message correctly. So moving forward, there is a lot to analyze, but we want to make sure we leave you with three key points so that we can look at our implementation strongly. The first being to communicate to customers during trade shows. This is your prime opportunity to really get yourself out there and to really talk to these people. The second being use your core strengths to secure new customers. This is going to be able to allow you to truly show who Avian Art is because that is something you should be truly leveraging. The third being to tailor your messaging to each customer a stakeholder. So as mentioned, the CEO, the VP Finance, the VP Engineering, it's very important to make sure we're sending them the right information through the right funnel. So we've looked at a couple alternatives. So basically, the first one of them is various, a various marketing campaign. It's an out-of-the-box creative uh, communications plan. This is something we want to consider moving forward just as, a, as one of the ideas. The second being the brand, heritage, and history. You guys have a rich brand and a rich history. So it's possible that we could also leverage something like that. The last being value-based messaging using your human and innovation uh, core values. So moving forward, we really want to look at these three core uh, decision criteria in order to make sure we know where we're going to go. The client perception, how does your client see you? The second being the credibility and enhancement prop, uh, potential. This will allow you to actually upsell your existing customers and potentially your future customers in order to really make sure you can get, get that sustainable re revenue for the future and the years to come, and along with the future growth potential as mentioned. So looking forward, we did notice that values-based messaging on your innovation and your human core values is something you guys can really leverage in order to move forward. So we believe that that is your strongest card in your hand when you're gonna be able to make this implementation for the next five months. Speaking of that. Now, we know where to go, the question is how. And that's where we're coming up with our communication plan, the people for tomorrow with ABNR. Really focusing on your two strong values to interact with your clients. Where we're gonna be focusing on the human aspect where you're playing a part with all the people, all the stakeholders, and really enriching their experience when using your products. 
and the fact that you're always focused on innovation. So anything new coming in the marketplace, you're the leader, you're the ones that they need to look for. And that's how you're gonna be able to really connect with them and honor your 25 year anniversary. In order to do so, we're gonna be focusing on three different problems. Starting off, we're gonna hit hard at the trade show, start off with your new campaign, and be directly talking to these individuals. After that's done, we're gonna introduce a new educational program where you can really interact with engineers and show them how their, your program really makes it easier for them. And finally, we're gonna give back and really celebrate as your anniversary comes up on November and have an event with all your key clients. In order for our goal to be really accomplished today, we're focusing on getting you three new contracts with uh, factories that you're currently working with, but to get those contracts that you don't have with those certain clients. So starting off, we're gonna be looking at a three-pronged implementation. In the first phase, it's all about fuel. And then the first months, we're gonna be hitting a trade show, and we're going to be introducing people for tomorrow and messaging towards this clientele. This is where you'll have the opportunity to get some leads and hopefully be able to get 15 from these trade shows. Once that's done, the next of the implementation for the next five months will be focusing on really connecting with these individuals. As you're approaching these new factories, you wanna show what your key criteria and your real competitive advantage is. We're introducing an educational program where you really teach and empower these engineers to use your programs. And finally, in the last months, we're gonna be focusing on celebrating your 25 years and getting you those three new clients. So let's start off with the first phase, Fuel. We're launching your new messaging in these trade shows. In order to do that, we want to make sure that your top uh, team is on the, on the trade show floor. We want your executive vice president to be there because we know that all the large players do come to these kind of uh, trade shows. We're going to be focusing more on aerospace, uh, where we currently are, and the international trade shows. So we know that you have clients from everywhere, and we want to make sure that's represented in the trade shows you go to. And we want to have your product development and some sales reps to be there as well to really support in this endeavor. Once we're able to do that, the whole message is going to be people for tomorrow. So we would like every employee to be branded with this message. Uh, the acronym will be P4T. This will really engage with them. They'll see it on the pocket of their uh, t-shirt and also the front. And it will have people for tomorrow. So this gets the conversation going. Your clients that have been with you will ask what's going on. And your true values are really strong with them because they know you care about humanizing and also innovation. So this is the best way to talk to them. And what we'll also be having is we'll take some uh, innov uh, innovation from uh, Pratt & Whitney and have these amazing plaques to honor your huge customers. So at the event, we want your executive uh, vice president to hand out these plaques to the CEO of your huge clients and take a photo with them. So let's take a look at the actual trade show. When you walk in, you want to have all the logos of your current customers and some testimonials. So maybe the VP of Pratt & Whitney says, I've been with them for over 25 years, I've never had a problem, always there to help me and look for solutions. This is the thing you want to have because you'll engage with new clients moving forward. We want a photo booth area so that they can take the picture with the executive, uh, vice, president, pres vice president, and we also want to highlight your past work, saying that you're very innovative and you're able to work with many different clients, so you'll really shine uh, over anyone else and really get those clients to be interested in you. So then we'll be able to secure those 15 leads. And in order to really make sure that you're getting the right people to your trade show booth, we're going to do some personal invites. So you already have these great clients, so you want to invite them by email, phone call, and get them there. And also have some press release media out in the market on aer uh, like aero aerospace industry media uh, platform. So that way everyone knows something's coming and the message is really strong moving forward. Now that we've been able to do this phase, we'll have 15 new leads that you can uh, acquire in this phase. Afterwards, we're going to be really focusing on generating a buzz and showing them that after 25 years, you're the top leader in this market and you have something to offer these engineers overall. We're going to be introducing an educational program platform. So this is where you'll have the opportunity to really pitch and negotiate to get these new uh, people signing on with the factories. In this point, we're going to be talking about financial saving and different tailored messages. So if we go a bit deeper, we see that the head office person will care more about their financial savings and how they can increase productivity. So that's what you're really be pitching them. And in terms of the engineer, he wants to know about how his life can or her life could be easier when they're implementing this new process. 
And in terms of when you're actually doing the negotiation, we see on the red table versus green table kind of scenario, the things that you're willing to give up and the things that you can't concede on. You're really gonna be looking at the term of the contract length and also margins. You wanna keep that the same because you're, you deserve these great margins, you have a great product. But what you can offer them and incentivize them is with this educational programming that we're really excited to talk about. So how will the program work? We would like your current sales representatives to be in charge of it. We'll give them added uh, documentation so that they know exactly how they can train these new engineers and really get them on board. In terms of the fact that you have clients from all around the world, there will be some in-person when uh, possible, but we would like you to film it and have it live streamed as well. So that way people can look back at the material regardless of wherever they are in the world. And this will be, uh, we'll be also making sure that they're very happy with the service with some satisfaction uh, surveys. So from the CEO to the user, so you really understand, are people really feeling the fruits of your label, labor and understanding how it works? So by the end of this, we hope to acquire uh, a 95% satisfaction rate moving forward. Now looking at your last phase, it's time to make sure we take off at a proper speed. The goal for this is to retain and secure some new uh, clients. Basically, who are we gonna do, who's gonna be able to do this? Your current sales representatives and their respective accounts, you're gonna be able to target them personally. Because of that personal interaction you have in the past, you're gonna be able to make sure you have a proper meeting with them and a proper sit down. That will allow for a nice human interaction. The basically, the personal follow up, this is gonna be able to set the scene. Basically have a semi-annual in-person meetup with these various clients, set at a proper date for them to, you know, make an actual um, meeting sit down. This is basically going to have some feedback for how the service has been. The second, it's going to be able to have a progress report. What this means is it's going to have a uh, sense where all the metrics you've acquired from the past year using your service will be able to be presented to them in a nicely packaged report. And finally, the opportunity to upsell. What's new? AV and R is always using their R&D development opportunities to make sure that they're on the cutting edge of technology with robotics. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to upsell your, new, your old consumers. Now, through this, you're going to do, be doing various emails with your monthly newsletter. This is something you currently do and something you should be currently continuously continue to leverage. And you're going to also have the quarterly reports with the personalized uh, product usage. So this all falls under the class of hypercare, making sure your consumer exists, but not just, past, not just at the first sale. You have a lifetime with them. It's like starting a relationship. You need to make sure you're building the ladder to success. Now. I'd like you to take a moment and pop a bottle of champagne because it's time to celebrate at the 25th annual, annual anniversary for your gala. What's this gonna look like? You have your schedule. Number one is the dinner. The speech with the AVNR CEO because we wanna give that personal interaction and make sure everyone is happy and ready to go for a dinner. Now this event will also have customer success stories in the form of keynote presentations. This is gonna be able to have a bit more of a, wow, someone as big as X is able to have such a good service with them. I want to have that service too. That's going to incentivize them to be an even better uh, relationship person in your uh, relationship with them. And then lastly, you're going to have brainstorm sessions. This is going to be in the form of a little bit of a cocktail and sit down session, which will allow you to basically say, what went well, what didn't go well, how can we improve together as humans? The second is the accessibility for your clients abroad. As we know, sometimes it might be a little hard to travel to this anniversary event, so we're going to be able to live stream this event for them, for all those who can't come. And then finally, the thank you. We are going to have a whopping five foot image plaque given out at the trade shows to these actual big consumers. That's five feet. That's a lot to look at for your actual uh, relationship with you guys. Now after this event, you're going to have those three new clients acquired, making sure that you have the attendees from the private event talking and spreading that positive word of mouth. Now looking at the budget allocation for this, we were given a budget of $35,000. We've divided it into a couple categories. The tactics being trade show, press releases, educational program, your 25th year annual event, and the plaques for a total of 35K, with the majority of it being spent on the dinner and the 29% being on your trade show. So with these three new contracts, we've estimated an average $1 million revenue per contract with the total of the three um, new clients, you're going to have a revenue generated of $3 million. All right, now we have certain risk and mitigations that we're ready to uh, do face uh, with, although we're going to discuss it more in the question and answer if you have certain questions relating to these risks. 
And so today you came with, to us with the mandate of delivering a new marketing campaign for your 25th year anniversary. And we did so by doing trade shows, educational programs, and hypercare. Thank you for your attention and we're now opening for questions. have surveys that we'll be giving to the users that will be at the educational program and through the surveys you'll be able to see how they answer the questions and then be the, having the result of 95 percent. Oh. Okay, do you plan to integrate uh, the use of social media into this, uh, this whole campaign? Yeah, definitely. So as we know, like um, the aerospace industry is a little bit more conventional in the sense that social media is not as developed so far. Um, there is Saffron that's doing very, very well in social media. So that's like a good example that you can base yourself off of. Although we really see that it's more like big companies like GE and Saffron that have a good social media presence. And for not saying small companies, but for, let's say, other players, um, yes, social media is important, but really put the focus on trade shows because that's where the whole communication happens and that's where the real deals get done, basically. Comment pensez-vous être attractif pour attirer des gens justement au kiosque? Et comment assurez-vous, après le kiosque, d'avoir un lien qui doit faire être vraiment capable de conclure par ça? Par exemple, au début, on va être sûr que tout le monde va être là parce qu'on va faire des, des uh, emails personnalisés. On va faire des communications en avant pour assurer toutes nos clientèles là-bas avant. Et aussi, on va avoir les publicités dans les uh, aerospace uh, media en avance. Comme ça, tout le monde est au courant qu'est-ce qui qu qu arrive. Puis à la fin, quand les personnes partent, on va être vraiment capable d'avoir une connexion avec eux parce qu'on donne une plaque à nos grands clients. Et aussi, à la fin, on avait le droit de les... Uh, les, les personnes de vent de faire des suivis. Ça, c'est pourquoi on a euh, avoir 15 euh, leads en faire à la fin. And do you have a, do you have a budget for this uh, ad campaign in the different medias, uh, specialized medias, or it's in the trade show uh, budget? Yeah, so for the trade show and regarding any sort of social media presence you do want to have moving forward, we'll be willing to uh, be basically able to incorporate that into the trade show budget. J'aurais une question par rapport au, au risque que vous avez noté dans une de vos, euh, ouais. de vos slides, que vous pouvez revenir par rapport à la, la possibilité qu'on n'ait pas de trois nouveaux clients, vous avez mis à peu près accentuer notre présence dans les trade shows. Est-ce que c'est un budget qui est euh, incrémental? Est-ce que vous avez des idées de comment est-ce qu'on pourrait euh, aller tacler ça dans le budget qu'on a actuellement parce qu'on n'a pas nécessairement plus de budget pour ça? Oui. Excusez-moi. Dans le fond, euh, on a plus calculé ça comme étant, vous avez déjà un budget pour les trade shows qui se passent en ce moment. Euh, je sais qu'il y a aussi le Paris Aviation Week qui est comme un gros événement pour les trade shows. Ça, ça peut plus aller chercher des clients européens. Mm -hmm. um, in Asia, I think, il y a aussi le Singapore trade show, si je ne me trompe pas. Mm -hmm. uh, fait ça, c'est comme d'autres exemples de trade show. Fait que, au lieu d'augmenter le budget pour ça, vous pouvez peut-être juste re, re, uh, reallocate mm -hmm. le budget de certains trade shows plus en Amérique du Nord, puis vraiment plus le disperser pour d'autres like, key areas in the world, basically. Puis tu as l'air de disconnect en show. Là. Euh, Lesquels qu'on veut, mettons. Tu sais, um, dans le fond, um, comme j'ai mentionné, uh, dans la région asiatique, Singapore, um, I think it's Aviation, Aviation Week, Week. <laughs> uh, c'est vraiment le plus gros, puis je pense que c'est même un des plus gros dans tout le monde. Fait que moi, je considérais que ça, c'est un des plus importants. Je pense que vous avez 7% de marché en Asie. Fait qu'il y a beaucoup d'opportunités pour vous d'augmenter votre business en Asie. Uh, fait que définitivement, moi, je commencerais par Singapore. <rire> Est-ce que vous avez pensé à une campagne euh, euh, média pour les, euh, faire des vidéos pendant ce salon-là, puis toutes ces initiatives-là, puis avoir, faire des bébés avec ça, et non pas juste le timing du salon et ces gens-là directement, mais de faire quelque chose à le plus grand rayonnement? Est-ce que vous avez prévu une stratégie par rapport à ça? Oui, exactement. Pendant le trade show, on va avoir des vidéos qui jouent, qui montrent 
petit bout de travail en avant, mais on va avoir la chance de faire des vidéotés de tous les gens et les photographes puis tout, et le montrer après pendant l'avènement de 25 ans. Comme ça, vous avez une intégration de toutes vos euh, solutions. Et puis après ça, vous pourrez aimer ça de quelle façon? Euh, dans le fond, on s'attendait à ce que, vu que c'est votre 25e anniversaire, vous êtes vraiment comme. Vous avez tellement un gros impact dans les. Merci. 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 Merci.